Hey guys, it's Chad, founder of Easy Pool Academy. So let's get started in our series here. Now the next few videos, we're going to kind of go over the placement of the pool in the backyard. I am a big believer in putting this pool where you want it to go. You know, I've noticed talking to customers all these years that sometimes they have concepts in their head that they're forced to put the pool in the flattest spot or here or here. And I want you to put the pool where you want to put it. In the above ground business, it's not so much we can't put the pool here, but we can put it here. It's more we can put the pool wherever you want it to go. The question is, what do we need to do to make that happen? Okay, you know, long story short, what I tell people a lot is building an above ground pool is like building a big old doghouse. You put it wherever you want to put it. The question isn't we can't do that. The question is going to be what do we need to do to make that happen for you? So put it where you want the pool to go. You know, the spirit of these next few videos, I'm really going to talk to you and encourage you to put this pool where you want it to go. I've seen in the past that, you know, people put these pools 100 feet away from their back door because they think they have to. And now you got to walk 100 feet for the next 20 years hopping in your pool. Put it where you want to put it. So the first thing we're going to talk here is about the size of the yard. And, and, and I, I need to start by explaining a couple key points to you. In the above ground business, when we say the pool size, we're talking about the swimming dimensions of the pool. That doesn't account for the frame of the pool itself. For instance, if we say a 24 foot round pool, if you're searching for pools and you found a 24 foot round pool that you're interested in, that's the swimming dimensions of the pool. But then you also have the framework of the structure. So technically, a 24-foot pool is going to cover 25, 25 and a half, 26 foot of space because we have that framework in there. And of course, that's all going to depend on the size of the framework of the pool that you're looking at. So just keep that in mind. The numbers you're seeing are the swimming dimensions of the pool. We're going to give you 24 foot of swimming space. But when it comes to your yard, you got to account for the whole structure. So I'm going to kind of show you some rules of thumb on how to figure this out. First of all, what you want to do is add three feet extra on a round pool to the pool size. That 24 foot is the diameter of the pool from one side of the pool to the other. Add three feet more, and that's the amount of space you're going to need to fit this structure. For instance, a 24 foot pool is going to be three feet bigger, is 27 foot. If you have 27 foot of space to put this pool, you can put it in. Now, these are, these are guarantees here. If you go three feet, you might only need 25 and a half, or you know, if you go 27 feet, you may only need 25 and a half feet. But what I'm telling you is if you're, if you've got three feet extra, you can fit the pool in all the time. And I'm saying this mainly because I know a lot of customers are trying to squeeze it between the fence and some trees or a deck and a patio. And they really want to know, you know, can I fit this pool in here? So that's how you figure it out. On a round pool, you need three feet extra than the pool size. If you're looking at a 24 foot pool, you need 27 feet of space. If you're looking at a 15 foot pool, you need 18 feet of space. If you're looking at a 30 foot pool, you need 33 feet of space. So that's one way to tell with that. Now, ovals are a little different. Let me go over this with you. The way an above ground pool works, let's say you have a round pool. The way an above ground pool works is it's designed to hold all the water pressure in the pool, pushing out against the wall. Well, since the pool's round, all the posts on that pool are holding the same amount of water pressure pushing against it. Well, let's say we wanted an oval pool. So we squeeze those sides together to give it an oval shape. Well, what's going to want to happen? Those sides are going to want to pop back out by nature. So then in the above ground business, what we do is we run straps underneath the pool to lock those sides together. And we also put bracing on the sides of the pool to keep that, the sides of the pool from leaning back from the extra pressure. Here's the rule of thumb. And we're going to break all this down here for you in a minute so you can go out and actually mark this in your backyard. But here's the rule of thumb for oval pools. There's bracing on the sides of the pools. There is no bracing on the ends. 
So on the ends, on the long side of the pool, we can just add three feet like we did with our rounds. So for instance, we're going to use an example of a 16 by 32 pool. 32 is the long end. We'll add three feet. We need 35 feet of space. On the sides, we have 16 foot of swimming area. We need to add in room for the brace on this side and the brace on this side. So how do we do that? Most braces in the above ground business are, are going to be three feet. They're going to come out three feet long or shorter. So if you add three feet to each side, which is a total of six feet, you can fit your pool in there. So for instance, if in that 16 foot, by the 16 by 32 pool, we need 16 feet on our sides. We're going to add three feet here, add three feet. That's a total of six feet. We're going to add six feet to the 16 foot. That's 22 feet. We need 22 feet of space. If we have 22 feet of space, we can fit that oval in there. So in a 16 by 32, we're going to need 22 by 35. That's how you figure it out. Now, we got a video later. There's two types of oval pools. There's one that has bracing, and there's also one you might have seen that's called buttress free that doesn't have bracing. However, I want you to know something. As far as insulation is concerned, as far as structure of the pool is concerned, even though the pool doesn't have bracing that sticks out, it still has a bar that goes underneath the ground to keep it from leaning back. So you still need that extra three feet of space to squeeze that pool in there. It's still going to take up the same amount of space as an oval pool that has braces on it. Even if it doesn't have the braces, you're still going to have that bar. So it's going to take up the same amount of space. And I'm really speaking to you because there's a lot of people that are really trying to squeeze it in. So they decide to go, you know, they've only got 18 foot of space so they go well let me get a 16 foot pool that doesn't have braces and i can squeeze it in that's not going to work you still have that bar coming out to keep it from leaning back you still need the extra three feet of space so that's the rule of thumb on that now what i really recommend you do if you want to play with the ideas of getting this pool in your backyard see how it's going to sit see what your measurements are you might want to build a deck you might have some bigger ideas on this thing so you want to see how this pool is going to look when it sits in the backyard. And we're about to show you how to go out there and mark out your pool. Now, first of all, with marking the pool, there's two things I want to tell you. Number one, if you go buy some marking paint, that orange marking paint, and you spray it in your yard, that paint's probably going to stay there for a year and a half. So I recommend you just get some flour and you can sprinkle some flour in your yard and that's going to go away in a day and a half especially if you're out there playing with ideas. If you know where the pool is going to be, mark it. You're going to dig it up when, when you grade the pool out anyhow. But if you're playing with ideas, I recommend you probably not marking it with a marking paint. Just get some flour and sprinkle it around the, the perimeter of the pool. We're about to show you how to do that. Number two, once you mark this pool out, trust me on this from experience. And I tell customers this when I go out to their house to mark it. We always mark it out and they go, hmm, they see the size of the pool and they go, hmm, that's not that impressive. But once we build the pool and the walls go up, they immediately go, whoa, this pool's huge. So keep in mind, I'm sharing this tip to you. This has been going on for 25 years. If you go out and you mark this and it doesn't look that big for it to you, Keep in mind, I promise you, the pool's going to look bigger once you get the walls up. Okay, so keep that in mind. Every time I go to someone's backyard and mark out their pool, they have that experience. So I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. Keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk here how to get in the backyard and how to mark these pools out. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over round pools. So the first thing we need to do with a round to be able to mark this out is we need to find the radius. So the way we're going to do that is let's take the pool size. We're going to take the size of the round pool. In this example, we're going to use a 24 foot round pool. So we're going to take the size of the round pool, which is 24 feet, and we're going to cut that in half. 
So in this example, for a 24 foot round pool, the radius is going to be 12 foot. So 12 foot is our radius. Let's write that number down and let's take it to the backyard with us. Now here's a top view of our backyard. We're going to go out and the first thing we want to do is decide where we want to put the pool and let's make a rough estimate on where the center of the pool is going to be. And we're going to hammer a stake in the ground or a screwdriver, something to mark the center of the pool. Then we're going to take that radius and we're going to pull a string or pull a measuring tape with that radius, which in this situation is going to be 12 foot. And as we spin this radius around to draw out our circle, we're going to mark the outside perimeter of this radius. This is going to show us where our pool is going to be. And it's going to look something like this. And this is going to give us our swimming area of the pool. But we have to keep something in mind. We also have a framework. So the framework's going to be whatever the pool you're looking at or the pool you purchase has a framework. You know, some of them stick out three inches, some of them stick out nine inches. So it, this is all going to depend on your particular pool you decide to go with. Now keep in mind, this is going to be the pool framework and our swimming area, but we also got to account for the extra grade that we're going to have. So this is where we go an extra three feet which is technically a foot and a half on each side of the pool. So for this 24 foot pool, we marked out a 24 foot circle, which was giving us our swimming area. We added three feet, which was a foot and a half on each side. And this is the amount of room we need to get this pool in its spot and have room to get around the pool and work. Now, if you only have, you know, you don't have the full 27 feet to fit a 24 foot pool in and you only got 26 feet, you can probably still fit it in there. But that's going now we're starting to depend on what size framework you have. You know, you got a big, fat, heavy framework or you have a thinner framework you can squeeze in. That's going to depend. Like I said, these numbers are giving you a guarantee that your pool is going to foot, fit in. All right. So now let's talk about oval pools. These are a little more in depth, but this is how you're going to mark this pool out. First thing we got to do is find the radius of our oval pool. So in our example, we're going to use a 16 by 32 oval pool. The first thing we're going to do is take the width of the pool, which in our 1632 is going to be the 16. That's our width of the pool. And we're going to cut that in half. So for our 16 foot, we're going to cut it in half and eight is going to be our radius. So eight is our radius. Let's jot that down on a piece of paper. But to mark out our oval, there's going to be one more number that we need. And that's going to be the center half of the pool. Not the whole length itself, but just the center half of it. So to get that center half, we're going to take the length of the pool. So for our 16 by 32 foot pool, 32 is our length. We're going to take that number and we're going to cut it in half. So for example, that 32 foot length would be 16 foot for our center half. So 16 foot is our center half. Let's jot that down on a piece of paper and let's take our, our eight foot radius and our 16 foot center half and let's take it to the backyard. So the first thing we want to do is take our center half of the pool, which in this situation is 16 feet. We're going to mark this out where we want the center of our pool, the very center half of our pool where we want it to go. We're going to put a stake in the ground on each end of that 16 foot. Then we're going to get our radius number and we're going to mark that out. In this example, it's going to be eight foot. We're going to uh, swing this around just like we would if it was a round pool and we're going to mark this out which is basically going to give us two circles and this is designating the swimming area of the ends of the pool now to just make it easy for you to mark it out you know none of this is super precise this is just to get you in the backyard and get you a, a good idea of what you're dealing with here you know we're at least getting you within a couple inches here is if you draw lines down the side like this to attach your circles, this is basically designating the side of the pool. 
So by doing this, you're going to see exactly where the swimming area of the pool is going to be. So this is how you mark out your oval. Now we got to keep something in mind. This is our swimming area, so we got to add to it our framework. Well, we got to keep in mind that on an oval pool, the framework doesn't look like this. The framework looks like this because we have bracing on the side. So what we want to do is make sure we're digging out enough for the braces and the ends. And this is where I come back to show you a foot and a half extra on both ends and three feet extra on both sides. If we mark it out that way, then we're going to be confident that whichever pool, whatever 16 by 32 pool you purchased is going to fit in this spot right here. And this is really going to be helpful for ovals because I know a lot of times people try to go with the oval pool to squeeze it in a spot and you got to make sure this is the amount of room you got. So if you've got this amount of room, you can be sure you're going to get your oval pool in there. This is one of our awesome videos in our completely free series, the Essential Above Ground Pool Buyer's Guide video series. We're not selling you anything in this series. We're not telling you what to buy. What we're doing is we're giving you the information you need to make an educated decision on what's going to work best for your situation. It's 20 free videos. You can get instant access right now. Click the link here on the screen or down in the description. It's going to take you to the video series. I know it's going to be a huge help for you and I'll see you guys there.